something new this week came in and it is in this tiny little box right here. It's much smaller than the Cine Ape 35 box. This little guy has folding arms. It's 130 grams and it has two screws that lock the arms into place once you fold them out. Um, it's a very interesting design. It looks different than kind of anything that I've seen out there and it was way smaller than I imagined. Um, and it was, it's, 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 it's interesting how small this really is. Um, it has pretty much everything on here that you need to fly long range. It has low KV motors. It can run a 3S battery on a XT30 in the back. It has built-in SPI ELRS. You can also put TBS Crossfire on here and it comes with a GPS in the back. And it looks like it's either an M8 or an M10, but we'll get into the specs in this review after the flight test. So uh, we'll unfold this. We'll put the two screws in the very bottom of it right here that it requires to fly it. Uh, you'll have to do that when you unfold it. I, I don't suggest trying to fly it without those two screws in the bottom, but we're gonna unfold it, put the two screws in, and we're gonna fire up uh, a 1300 milliamp battery. And we're also gonna put the Flywoo brand new GoPro decased nine on here as well. So um, the good news about that is I didn't really feel it when I was flying it. Um, which is great because it is really nicely redesigned from Flywoo. Uh, Got to give them a thumbs up for that design. And this is what it looks like unfolded. Um, one, one con about this design, let's just be honest, like you want to be super careful when you're unfolding this because you can see back here, it does have a little extra thicker covering over these motor wires, but these motor wires are super, super thin. So you don't want to, to smash these. There's not a lot of room uh, between these when they fold back and over top of the next set of motor wires. Um, there's literally maybe a millimeter worth of room there. Uh, but they did cover it up with some extra tape and some extra heat shrink. Um, and they kind of come out of the way of it a little bit. But we'll show you that all on the bench after the flight test. Uh, this one's an analog quad. It comes in at around $180. So it's pretty cool for a pocket drone, something you could just stick in your pocket and go fly for six miles out off of a, a cliff or a mountain somewhere. That's that's pretty impressive. Six mile range on this one uh, and up to a 30 minute flight time. Portable, under 250 grams. I think that's what you guys were asking for. Let's go ahead and do some flying. And after that, we'll talk about this quad on the bench and I'll give you my honest opinion. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do the flight test now. Let's get the Fold Ape 4 up in the air. You know, I have to say, like, this quad, I didn't expect it to kind of just fly so smooth. And that actually led me to, to, to feeling something out here. And, and what that was was just, like, it feels like a cruiser explorer. And so immediately my first thing that I wanted to do with this quad was go places that I normally wouldn't go with some of my other ones and just kind of take my time. Um, also I'd say like the Cadex Ant on here, it actually does pretty good uh, for being an analog camera. And when you're out at distance, the VTX on this quad is 600 milliwatt. So even behind some of like the thickest evergreen trees, I had a pretty good signal. There was some, some breakup, some static, but Anytime you put one of these giant trees in between yourself and the quad, uh, that's just going to happen. But we're rocking my Flywoo GoPro 9 on here today, um, and I wanted you to see what this footage looks like because this is the perfect quad to throw it on. And honestly, I, I didn't feel the extra weight, which was really cool. Now, if you're flying long range with any of these drones, like I'm going to recommend that you put the angle mode as your first mode on there. If you're out at distance and you uh, lose connection to the quad, you can go into GPS rescue number one, is what you should have set up. You should field test that uh, before you fly out miles and miles. But I've been in situations where I kind of uh, like lost sight of my camera and I'm able to flip into the angle mode, which stabilizes the quad. And if I you know, punch out, you go high up, you'll regain your uh, camera. So if you get fuzzy, you lose your video, flip into angle mode, and that will save you. Um, 
you know, they, they have a saying, when in doubt, punch out. It's totally true. But again, just like a, a really enjoyable experience and like for something that's under 250 grams that you can just, you know, they say pull out of your pockets about the same size as my phone folded, which is kind of crazy. Um, the fun factor is like a 10 out of 10 on this quad because like flying it through these sections right here, I'm really testing the endurance of that SPI antenna that's hanging off the back of that quad. Um, with a, a normal SPI receiver, you know, I've flown around the backside of my house and fail safe um, without, you know, with a ceramic antenna that's built into the flight controller. And that's, those are mostly for tiny whoops. But when you're talking long range, you need some extension. And they've definitely done that right. Um, and it feels, it feels cool. It feels good. And finally, we got a little bit of sunshine, you guys, to be able to fly this quad. Um, that was the best gift to me all winter because I've been waiting for a day like this to be able to do a flight test. The grass looks green, the sky is blue, and up here where we are in Oregon, in the thick of it, it gets it's ex pretty gray in the winter. So this was a great February day to test out this quad. And just to show you too how, how well I can see, I wanted to come in close to the ground. Uh, with this Cadex ant and just getting close to where some debris might be that might catch this quad and like bring it down to the ground. I'm able to kind of really see pretty well with the Cadex ant camera, which is great. You know, and some of the shadows and stuff as well, like you can still see it actually looks better than the, the shadows look better on the Cadex ant than what you see here on the GoPro. The GoPro has some pretty uh, dark black point in that camera but overall looks good I'm also running one of the Flywoo uh, ND4 filters over top of this so it also reduces some of that uh, shutter but inside my camera view and the amp view I don't see any I didn't see any jello which means that the tune is good because the quad my first impression of it was that it feels smooth and on 3s it's been they batteried it down. Typically this size quads run in 4S or 6S and batterying down to 3S actually tames it down quite a bit. So you have a little smoother experience and it's gonna be less punchy. And on a quad like that's a cruiser, you really don't need it to be punchy. Punchy gets you in trouble when you're flying through gaps in between things. If you fly up close to trees, and you spot a gap that you want to try out if you get nervous and bump the throttle a tiny bit it can put you into a tree branch so it's kind of cool that this one's flying smooth and i'm happy with the way it flies so i'm stoked about like the small factor and just be able to throw this one up on a 3s battery the 3s batteries are going to be cheaper than 4 and 6s batteries and overall darwin fpv is just always a deal and they've been putting out some pretty cool stuff lately. They also have a long range nine inch drone that I'd like to test out, but I'm pretty happy with this one. Let's go back to the bench and take a little closer look at this one. Let me talk about it on the bench. All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test. We have three different batteries we're gonna weigh here. First, we're gonna weigh the drone, 132 grams by itself on the scale. The smallest battery, if you wanna freestyle, it's gonna be a 3S650 still under 200 grams which is kind of amazing 191.9 grams for the 650. If we move up to the 850 this surprised me right here because I thought this was going to put us well up there but we're still weighing in at 209.4 grams which is impressive and even more impressive is a giant 1300. This came with um, one of the FMS planes that I flew recently and I have it converted on there down to an XT30, so that's even adding a little extra weight on there. But this is still keeping us under 250 grams, which is uh, pretty impressive. It's 249.6 with a 1300 milliamp battery on there. The accessories in the box, they're pretty decent for what you get for $180. You get your customer support card, two sheets of stickers, some extra hardware. You get two antenna posts with caps, as well as some zip ties for tidying up your cables. And you get a Phillips head screwdriver. 
and these are the screws that go into the holes here and they have it labeled right here so once you unfold this quad it tells you to put the screw through there and there is a lock nut on the top side of the frame that this screw has to touch and attach to uh, with your phillips head screwdriver you're going to put that through there and if i was to be honest it's a little bit fiddly to to get all of this carbon to line up properly for a two millimeter bolt to go through uh, probably my least favorite part of this frame um, i also had to take off my gps in the back remove that and tidy up all of the gps wires so you want to be super careful about that make sure everything is twisted up nice and tight before you take off for the first time or unfold this uh, you want to go over all of the bolts on this frame as well and just go ahead and tighten up everything on here because i did find some loose bolts on this frame um, top to bottom as well as the two bolts on top of the props tighten those up if you want to add some loctite on these bolts for where the three bolts go through the arms to the motor you can also do that i would recommend doing that uh, just a little bit of loctite will help what i also so thought was kind of nice is the the Darwin FPV folding aid comes with uh, this velvet bag. It's similar to the Axis Flying style bags, just not quite as nice of a quality, but it will suffice and keep the dirt and stuff off your quad. Um, just give you a place to, to put your quad while you're traveling. I thought that was pretty cool. Now let's talk about the quad. Uh, you know, this is a neat looking quad. Um, it's been a while since I've had something that came in that I just, I enjoyed looking at like this squad is really quite nice to look at um, and it's functional and it's awesome that it breaks down into a small size like this this antenna can come off i put a zip tie around it because the the tpu mount felt a little bit loose to me but you need to make sure it's pushed all the way down and through the mount because um, the way it comes out of the box is that this is folded down underneath where the strap's going to be so you just want to make sure it's pushed all the way down and through. And for sure, if you're flying long range, make sure you put a zip tie around this. Um, I also like the fact that it comes with this full size GPS. Just going to be a little more reliable. I did look and it's a GM8. It is an M8 style GPS. I was hoping it was an M10, but you know, M8 will suffice for this application. It also has 1504 motors. Um, but they are 3,800 kV, so you can run Lions on here. And these are Darwin branded motors. You've got this camera in the front that gives you up to about, I guess, about 25 to 30 degrees worth of tilt. Uh, I didn't tilt it up super high because I kind of wanted to keep this in a cruiser fashion uh, when I was out flying mine today. Uh, and, I, and I have to tell you that my DK GoPro 9 on here, on this mount, I didn't really feel it when I was flying it. Um, when I was doing some dives and stuff with this quad, it didn't really feel uh, like it was going to bottom out. Uh, we do have also four millimeter folding arms. And, you know, again, all of this hardware on here is all Phillips head screws. And you know, I, I do wish it was two millimeter screws. That's the one thing that I, I could say that I'm not a fan of. Um, but it is fairly easy to work on it's easy access to get to the flight controller on here um, we do have an aio stack in here and it's the darwin fpd f411 flight controller it does have built-in elrs so if you already have an elrs radio don't have to buy a receiver because it has an spi receiver built into it and the way you want to get that to bind is plug this in three times really quickly and it should start flashing twice on the flight controller and then it will be in spine mode now what's kind of amazing about this quad is it is rocking some four inch props on here um, these are the gym fan f4019-2 transparent gray props they also have this sort of locking mechanism that goes over top of each prop it does appear to be a carbon locking plate here with two phillips head screws going down into the motor one thing, again, I, I might, since these are folding and movable props, since they have kind of action to them, I would suggest taking a tiny little bit of blue Loctite and locking these down just so that these don't kind of swing loose. You want to check these every once in a while uh, because there is more action on these props than, you know, something like a typical um, tri-blade prop that's just mounted down to the motor. 
And on Darwin FPV's website, they're saying that this is kind of a wide X frame type. It does have a wheelbase of 168 millimeters. But what I'm seeing here is a dead cat version. Uh, it has a little bit forward swept arms, but you don't see the props in view, which is pretty cool. Uh, I do prefer the DC style frames, the, the dead cat ones. And uh, I just I just like the way they, f they fly and, and it keeps the props out of the frame, especially for your GoPro footage, uh, if you're going to do that. And in the back of the squad, you can kind of see how they have routed the motor wire off to the side like this. So that kind of keeps it out of the way of this arm that folds back. Um, and it takes a little bit of force to force this back. Just make sure that your prop is kind of out to the side when you're folding these back because I've stabbed my flight controller a couple times with the prop getting this to move. And you can see how it just barely touches this back wire. And I can feel it hit that bolt. It's a mounting screw uh, nut right here. So when this is coming back, I kind of have to lift it a little bit and kind of goes into place. And then you're going to pull on this one forward and that one comes into place. So it takes a little bit of force to actually close these. Um, and I feel like when you get your frame, it's probably going to be a little bit tighter, but it should loosen up over time. And if you take your time, just be super careful folding it. Uh, you're not going to pinch any wires, but that might be the one caveat of this frame. You're just going to always have to pay attention to double, triple check that your wires aren't being compromised. And really to get an idea of how small this quad is, it's sitting next to the Gap RC Domain. I have the three and a half inch version here, um, and you can see how scaled down the a the Fold A4 is in comparison. Um, you know, three and a half inch quad here, four inch quad over here with folding props. Um, it's, it's super cool. <laughs> so it is quite slammed down for some long range micro cruising. And for the analog version, they did use the Caddx Ant camera, which is okay, but um, I kind of consider it a, it's a it's a budget camera. But the reason that they put this on here is because it is super lightweight. Uh, but you can also get other versions. You can get the Wasp Nano camera. You can also get it with Avatar 1S camera. So that's kind of cool that they're going to offer Caddx Avatar version of it, as well as the awesome DJI 03 air unit version. And here's a little closer look at the power system. The 1504 3800 kV motors, they are Darwin FPV branded. Uh, on top, you also have that two-piece prop, the transparent gray gym fans. These are the 4019 props, and they do have the carbon prop plate on there uh, again. So I'm not sure why Darwin FPV has the world's hardest to read printing, but hopefully you guys can see that in the video. It's a uh, very, very subtle side of the motor. So at the end of the day, you know, is it something you should buy? Uh, I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, if the specs, the size, the portability and the flight time are something that you like. And, you know, also I think the DJI version is going to come in around 400 to $500. It's not going to be super cheap for that, but it never is for DJI 03. If you want something to to have to cruise around under two hundred dollars with a built-in ELRS receiver on there, I think that's that's kind of cool. Um, and again, it is an SPI receiver, but they did not just put the ceramic tower on there, which I appreciate. They actually use an IPEX connector, and they come off the back of the quad right here, and a pretty good height as well to get that RF away from the quad. So I, I think for long-range purposes, typically I would not suggest using SPI. But since they did extend this antenna off the back, that gives you a little more chance to make it out that like six mile range. Now, would I fly this out six miles? Probably not. Um, would I trust it to do some like medium range? Yeah, I, I would trust this to do some medium range flying and some some kind of fun close in mountain soaring type of flying, um, just some cruising around and you know, I, that's the way I would fly this because this would be impossible to find if you crash like five miles out, you know, you're going to kiss it goodbye at that point. But they're saying again, like six miles out, uh, which is around 10 kilometers 
which would be pretty impressive. So if anybody has a video like that out there and you're able to post that kind of video, uh, I'd love to see a link to that, to someone really getting some serious range on something so small. But it is cool. It's portable. Um, it's 180 bucks for the analog version. So that just tells me that analog's not quite dead yet. They're having some problems with some chip sourcing right now. Um, chips coming more scarce by the day. So I have seen some increases in prices on analog stuff, but for what this is for the price, it's not super expensive. Um, and, and I do find it pretty neat. So I would have to say this one came out of left field. Um, if I was to rate this one, I'd probably give it around four stars. Um, the only thing that scares me is the, the way that it tightens up when you're folding it. So you're just going to have to be super careful that you're not having any wires hanging out the back part of this frame when you're folding it. Just be super careful with it. Um, it is delicate and extremely small. Such a micro nano drone. It, it does appear to be much tougher made than like the Recon 3 that we reviewed a while back on the channel. Um, and yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I would give it more stars um, if I wasn't scared to fold it as much. Um, so that's that's just my honest opinion on that. It's it's slightly frightening to fold, um, but then again, any any folding quads make me nervous. Um, but it's nice that they actually have two screws that lock these arms into place, so there's no chance that they can open up or move inward while you're flying. So I, I think that's good. So so two thumbs up for this one. It was a lot of fun to fly. It has a good tune on here, and you have a lot of options from lipo. To, to lie on and it will freestyle I'll, I'll try to do some freestyle video on it coming up for people who want to see that um, and maybe i'll freestyle it even with a, a d case camera on there who knows but hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, experience with this quad and if you want to grab one from the link down below i'm not even sure mine's an affiliate link at this point but um, i will put the link down there for you and you can check it out look over the specs and decide for yourself if it's a quad you want to grab I think it's pretty cool. Uh, something new to fly and something new to look at and quite portable. Guys, take care. I wish you all the best. Please do subscribe on the channel and I'll see you on the next one.